You ever wonder how there are some people that just seem to get it? They're fast, they're smart, they get everything. Maybe you even got a bit jealous of your friend at school that could get everything the teacher was saying. He barely studied. He, you never saw him open a book and take a look at it. Just got straight A's all the time without even noting anything in his notebook. You know, the people that can dive into complex topics and emerge with insights and you just scratch your head and all, like, how did she do that? Well, today we're going to dive into the mind of a man who was a master of this, one of the greatest minds of all time, a man who was once chosen as the smartest man on earth. And his mom mocked him for it because she had a great sense of humor. A man that has just become my favorite scientist of all time. And that's a tall order because I am a nerdy guy. Made him my favorite wasn't his accomplishments. Of course, he won a Nobel Prize in physics. He invented quantum electrodynamics. He worked in the Manhattan Project. And if you haven't seen Oppenheimer yet, you should because he's there. This man who's one of the greatest physicists of all time, of course, is the one and only Richard Feynman. And what makes him so random? What made me a fan of him? Well, did you know he was a late speaker? He was three years old when he started speaking. His parents thought he had some problem. And later he became a fantastic communicator, a great teacher, a great professor. He also loves pranks. When he was working at the Los Alamos National Lab during the Manhattan Project, he used to mess around with them. He pretended that he found a way to break into the safes to mess around with the other scientists that were working with him there. The man was also romantic. Although he was married three times, his one and only love of his life was his first wife, Arlene. And unfortunately, only two years after they got married, she died of tuberculosis. But my man, Richard, he never forgot her. He remained devoted to her memory for the rest of his life, even though he got married two times later. Did you know he lived here in Brazil, my country, and fell in love with Brazilian culture, especially Brazilian music, Afro-Brazilian music. And he became a professional bongo player. And that even led him to a divorce later down the line. Did you know he was so fascinated by the Mayans that he once wrote a paper on Mayan hieroglyphics? And did you know he even became a famous artist? Yeah, he was an accomplished painter. He had to sign his works under the pseudonym of Ofi. Go well, back to Brazil for the last piece of gossip because you're here to learn about his successes, not his randomness, though they are very interesting. And the man has much to offer. That's why I'm talking about this before we start. Did you know his love of music and his love of Brazil led to his divorce in the early 70s? And I got the clip from a Brazilian newspaper to show that it must be true. Came back to Rio for Carnival. It wasn't his first time. He did it many times. But he had just gotten divorced. And why do you think he got divorced? Probably not because of what you're thinking of. He got divorced because, I quote his ex-wife, she said, You know what? After studying for 10 hours a day, he wouldn't let me sleep at night. He makes unbearable noises with his cuicas and pandeiros that he was gifted by Salgueiros, it's called Samba. So, Richard... Couldn't just study all day. He couldn't give his wife a bit of attention. No, he had to play with his instruments through the night and didn't let her sleep. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, back to what we're here for, his inspiring story of success. Today, we'll learn about the Feynman technique, a foolproof method to understanding anything, even the most complex of topics. Even rocket science, I promise. We'll also talk about his 12 problems framework on how keeping a list of questions you're passionate about can turn you into an idea generating machine. Talk about the curiosity engine, how to boost your critical thinking, 
how to embrace your quirks and interests to become a well-rounded genius and how you can become a classic going forward so people don't forget you. So are you ready to unlock the secrets of one of the greatest minds of all time? Let's dive in and let's start with his most famous framework, the Feynman Technique. Have you ever found yourself stuck when trying to explain something to someone else? Sometimes we think we know everything about a concept. When we try to explain it, we can't. Or maybe you were studying for a test at school and you thought you knew everything about the subject. But when the test came, you looked at it and you couldn't fill in the blanks. You got an F when you thought you should get an A or a B at least. Well, even Feynman faced this challenge. So he developed the framework. Because imagine, the man wasn't dealing with simple subjects. The man was dealing simply with key concepts in physics. He was studying subatomic particles. So there's no space for you to think you know something. You need to really know. You need to really understand. So he developed this technique that's a very simple but very effective method to understanding and explaining complex ideas. No matter how complex, there's no idea that's too complex for the Feynman technique. And by using it, you'll be able to explain anything. You'll be able to understand things at a deeper level and you will never be stuck again thinking you knew something when you didn't or even worse. Don't get me started on feeling you know something. No, there's no feeling. You can't think you know everything about subatomic particles when you're working on the Manhattan Project. There's no thinking there. There's no feeling allowed when you're working with something on a massive scale like this, on something that can have massive consequences like this. So what are the steps for his method? First, you pick a topic you want to know more about. Maybe you got a test and you want to study for the test. Maybe there's something you want to learn for work. Well, you pick this topic, then you try to explain at a five-year-old level. You try to explain to a kid. That's why in many companies right now, they're asking you in your interview to explain something like there were a kid, that's the test. Then when you explain to the kid, you get, you sit little Timmy on your lap and you try to tell him about something. For instance, I got principles from Ray Dalio here. You read about it and you want to talk about options with him. You want to tell him how Ray Dalio invented the chicken McNugget using options. And you tell him, so Timmy, you know, Ray Dalio, he was the guy behind the chicken McNugget because before the price of the chicken was very volatile and McDonald's couldn't have a reliable product because the price would go up and down too much. And then when you're trying to explain to little Timmy, you'll see that there might be some gaps. You don't remember something. There's some information you forgot. And little Timmy will look at you puzzled and you'll get desperate. And what do you do then? You go back, you found the gaps in your understanding and you saw that little Timmy couldn't understand what you wanted to teach him. So you go back to the book, read again, look for the gaps, fill in the gaps, then go back to Timmy. And you do this back and forth, back and forth until Timmy understands because he needs to understand how Ray Dalio made the chicken McNugget. If he does it, he won't ever get McNuggets again. If you give Timmy McNuggets, I'll go to your house and there will be unintended consequences. You're warned. So how can you use this? Apart from using this as leverage to never buy fast food for your kid again, you can become a better student, be it at school or learning something you want to know can become a better teacher because you'll have to communicate with people better. What are the key concepts of the subject you want to teach them? You'll also end up becoming a better communicator while you're at it. Last but not least, you'll learn how to talk to kids. That might come in handy someday. You never know. What, what are you looking? Maybe your next girlfriend has a kid. You have to tolerate him. 
And coming to think of this, the countless hours that I've spent talking to AI models like ChatGPT, maybe Midjourney even, have primed me to write more clearly and concisely because the machine won't understand exactly what you want if you don't talk to it in a way that it can understand. So thanks, Rick. Thanks for your method. And thanks, Sam Altman, for throwing out ChatGPT so I can become a better communicator. You guys are awesome. Like Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, you just don't understand it well enough. So if you have to talk in jargon, if you have to use fancy words, you don't understand it well enough. That's the core concept behind the Feynman technique. To really understand something deeply can just get a drawing board or a piece of paper and make a simple diagram. Of course, you won't explain all of the complexities, all of the intrinsicacies behind the subject in a simple diagram, but you will explain it well, you will explain it well enough. And if you're able to explain it well enough in a simple diagram or in a simple sentence, you're good to go. That means you understand the subject, but you're not sure where to use this, right? I feel you. And we'll talk about this in a minute, but first, please share this with your friends who loves kids or even with your friend who hates kids, but needs to know how to become a better communicator with kids. Well, where to use the Feynman technique? You can use another framework of his. Jay-Z said that he had 99 problems. You don't need so many problems. You can just focus on 12, a dozen, and you'll be good to go. You know how some people seem to be born like they were creative. They have these fantastic ideas that you look at them and think, where did you get this from? What's your secret? Do you have like God-given talent or something? Well, I'll share it with you. Your dirty little secret. What if you could unlock the same level of creativity? What if you could be as creative as Salvador Dali or Antonio Gaudí or someone that's not Catalan, but you know about and think is creative? Think about that person, okay? So what's Feynman's secret to creativity? You know, he was often regarded as one of the world's most intelligent people. He even was named the world's smartest man by Omni magazine once. And he did all this. He won a Nobel Prize in physics. That's one of the hardest to get. And his IQ was of only 125. And to put that in perspective, 125 is about the range of your average school nerd. So your school nerd should be around the range of 120, 130, 140. And Rich was right at about 125. It's funny because when the magazine named him the most intelligent man, his mom mocked him. Yeah, Lucille Simon was quoted saying, Are Richie the world's smartest man? God help us. Yeah, his mom mocked him. He got the sense of humor from his mom. But what set him apart if he wasn't that intelligent? Of course, he was. Very intelligent, very smart, but wasn't on a Isaac Newton level of 200 plus or 180, whatever. What set him apart was he was very, very, very curious. He could not get enough. And he had a list of 12 problems that he was always trying to solve. They were always on the back of his mind. So every time he read something, every time he saw something or heard something, he would run this information through his list of problems and think, how could this new information I got help me solve those problems? And this approach led him to make connections between things that were seemingly unrelated, ideas that most people would never think that could be put together. But to him, to Richard Feynman, there was nothing that was unthinkable. He would just let his curiosity lead him to places and mix and match the dots in ways only he could. That's what people will say is creative. Creativity 
is not about doing new things because as the saying says everything under the sun has been done before has been said before what creativity really means is using your unique experiences the things that you did the things that you learned the things that the books that you read places you've traveled the talks you had and by mixing and matching all of these experiences you can get a new perspective something unique get to a conclusion that only you could possibly get to because those experiences are unique to you so Feynman for him nothing was set in stone he allowed himself to think things that people would think were unthinkable and this allowed him to explore ideas freely and led him to making groundbreaking discoveries to quote the man himself every time you read or hear a new trick or a new result test it against each of your 12 problems to see whether it helps so every time you watch a podcast or read a book or even hear some gossip Think about your 12 favorite questions, the 12 favorite problems you're trying to solve, and think how this new information, and by doing this exercise, you'll be constantly coming up with new ideas, with things that people around you will think are creative. But actually, they're just the mixing and matching of things you already knew, put under the lens of a new piece of information you didn't know before. So what are the 12 problems you're trying to solve? Make your list, then please share it with us so we can solve them together. Another concept that I like, though it's not Feynman's, is that of the curiosity engine. So Richard said, I have no special talent. I'm only passionately curious. And that's a fantastic way to put it. He believes that curiosity is a cornerstone for creativity and innovation. And he advocated for a relentless questioning world around us. For him, Pursuing knowledge was a lifelong journey, so you should always question things. Why do I think what I think? Why do I do what I do? Why do people around me do what they do? Is it because it's the right thing to do? Is it because it's the best thing? Or is it because I was conditioned to do this that way or the other? If you keep this childlike wonder of curiosity alive, if you keep questioning things, you will not only enrich your understanding because as we saw before in the Feynman technique, you need to ask questions to see what are the gaps in your knowledge and in your understanding, but also you'll start cultivating a more purpose-driven approach to problem solving, to innovation, and even to life itself. Because the 12 questions that you decided are the most important for you they will be your driver towards your purpose. They are important to you because they are aligned with something that you believe is important for you. So by putting everything you learn, everything you consume into perspective of those questions, you'll be automatically aligning with your own purpose. And this is what I call building your own curiosity engine. Like Feynman said, as I get older, I realize being wrong isn't a bad thing like they teach you in school. No, it's an opportunity to learn something. And that communicates very well with our last episodes, how failure shouldn't define you, but be the cornerstone for future success, doesn't it? Well, let's open Richard Feynman's toolbox and get some of his main tips to build your own curiosity engine. Because curiosity is the engine for achievement. First, can turn problems into puzzles. Remember those riddles your grandpa used to tell? If you approach your challenges as if they were puzzles in a game, you can explore different angles, different perspectives, and you can look at your obstacles like if they were, and you can see your obstacles as opportunities for growth, opportunities for learning. So you can maybe look at them as if they were a challenge in a game or a puzzle in a game. If you face a boss in a video game, you won't go to your room and start crying. You will think, how can I beat the boss? So you, by looking from a different perspective, by trying to look at ourselves, our lives from outside, from a different perspective, 
we won't get so trapped in our own feelings and our own thoughts and our own ways of thinking. And by seeing things from another lens, it will be much easier to solve our problems. Second tip, ask questions. Do you remember when you were a kid and you used to ask your dad or mom or whoever every, about everything? Like, why is the sky blue? Why is water wet? Or why, why is ice cold? Well, as my science teacher used to say when I was in seventh or eighth grade, a good student isn't the one who knows everything. A good student is the one that asks questions. Because this is how you deepen your understanding, by letting your curiosity guide you toward making the subject matter valuable to you, by asking questions, how can I apply this to my own life? But how can this be interesting for me? Then you can have a much better understanding because even Elon Musk said this, that in order to not forget about things, you need to make them valuable to you. You must have some kind of emotional connection to those things if you want to remember them. For a tip, embrace uncertainty. So if you think about it, even the top experts started as novices one day. One day, Nikola Tesla knew nothing about physics or electrodynamics, but he was curious about it. He asked questions, he made experiments. Little by little, he became a genius that many regard as the smartest man ever. So being open to ambiguity allows you to see things from different perspectives, welcome new ideas and new insights into your thought process. Finally, fourth tip, pursue your interests. Think about it. What makes you unique? What makes you you? Well, your passions, the things you're interested in, the things that light a fire in your belly. The more dots of knowledge and experiences you collect, the better you'll be at making meaningful connections, connections that only you could do. So keep the fire of curiosity and go learn and research about the things you like to, the things that are interesting, the things that you feel a magnetic pull towards. And now that you know how to build your curiosity engine, you might be thinking, how can I boost my thought process so I can become a critical thinking beast? Because that's why we're here at the Rock and Roll to Success, to become a beast at anything we put ourselves into, to become one of the best, to become the greatest version of yourself possible. So you want to become a beast? I'll tell you how. Merge both concepts. Yeah. Because if you have a tool, that's cool and all. But if you have two tools, or maybe three tools, four tools, you become unstoppable. Think of it. If you wanted to eat, if you only had a fork, it would be much better than having to eat with your hands. But a fork is not enough. If you only had a knife, sure, you can cut things, but it's still hard to eat. But if you have a fork and a knife, you're golden. And this applies to everything. So if you can 10x your productivity with one tool, that's awesome. But then imagine 10xing again with another tool. That's 100x. And then you get another tool and 5x. That's 500x. And then another tool that's 10x again. That's 5,000x. And you can see where I'm growing, right? That's what we call exponential growth, baby. That's what you have to do. Stack, 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 stack. Tools, 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 skills, 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 and you become unstoppable. So how do we merge the two techniques? How do we merge the Feynman technique and the 12 problems framework? So first of all, you pick one of the problems that you're trying to solve. Start with something that you are really passionate about because that's your fuel. Then gather information and think of actionable steps. So you research the problem, distill all the information you can, and put it into bite-sized steps that you can actually take. Because like they say, Rome wasn't built in a day, but they did lay bricks every hour. You probably won't get where you want to get and become an overnight success. 
but you have to put in the work, put in the reps under the bar, day in, day out, and one day you'll get there. Then, first step, you can simplify with the Feynman technique. Try to explain the problem in the simplest way possible. Like if you were talking to a five-year-old. If you don't have any kids around, maybe you can talk to an AI like ChatGPT. Use it as your sounding board. You can even tell it to act as if it were a kid. So pretty much the same thing. It'll ask you weird questions like a kid does anyway. Then fourth step, identify the gaps. You you'll see that there are gaps in you <clears throat> you'll see that there are gaps in your understanding. That's normal. Things you hadn't considered before, you hadn't thought about. So now it's time to fill the gaps. Go back to the literature, go back to the videos, go back to, to wherever you were, maybe find new sources and fill in those gaps. Then with this new information, you refine your notes. You get all that info with the gaps filled. You simplify your notes so they can make sense to your future self. Because, okay, right now, you will remember because you just read it. Maybe a week from now, you can read those half-assed notes and still remember. But what about if you want to look at it two years from now, five years from now? You need to put it in a way that your future self can use the least amount of information to remember the key concepts. And if you want to know more about this, you should check out Thiago Forte's or Thiago Forte framework on building a second brain. It's awesome. After this, revisit and revise. So whenever you encounter new information or new insights, you should go back to your problem and see if it changes your conclusions. Sometimes a very minor detail can be the missing piece that changes everything. So sometimes this little piece of information that you never think about before can change everything. Did you know that Feynman made a discovery on the spin of subatomic particles by seeing someone throw a plate at Cornell? Yeah, he looked at a plate, he saw it spinning, and the plate had the emblem of the school, and he noticed that the, while the plate spun in the air, it also wobbled a bit, and the spin was different for the emblem and the, the plate itself. So he started thinking, how could this apply to other things? And he ended up finding out some aspects of subatomic particles based on seeing a plate flying in the air. So you can see that anything can be a valid piece of information. Anything can become the straw that breaks the camel's back and is responsible for your breakthrough. So stay curious, approach your problems, with a relentless sense of curiosity, because you never know what you'll get. Life's a box of chocolates, like Forrest Gump used to say. And I know, I know, you are very curious. You wouldn't be here if you weren't. And you might be wondering, what happens if you add even more tools to your toolkit? Because we added the Feynman technique, that's 10x. We added the 12 problems framework. That's another 10x, but what if I could stack another 10, another 10, and get that exponential growth we talk about all the time? Well, Feynman was a master at collecting intellectual tools, and that's what made him a polymath. And what's a polymath? Well, a polymath is a Renaissance man. You know, those artists like Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo that have masterpieces in many different shapes and forms. For instance, Da Vinci not only painted the Mona Lisa or the Last Supper, he also invented a ton of things. He was one of the first students of anatomy in Europe because accepting corpses was banned by the church for a long time. He invented a concept for a helicopter and a parachute and many, many other things. Or Michelangelo, the same guy that painted the Sistine Chapel also was the guy who created the Statue of David. In our world, digital abundance, where we can connect to people all over the world, where we can learn from people all over the world, from all walks of life, 
any skill that we put our minds to, why not use it in our favor? Why not? Why settle for being a genius in only one field when you can be a renaissance man like Richard Feynman? And like we talked in the beginning, the man, he was one of the greatest physicists of all time. He won a Nobel Prize. He developed a whole field in physics. He worked on the Manhattan Project. He was a great professor that students love. But what makes him legendary isn't that. There are many physicists that develop cool stuff, that discovered new breakthroughs. Every year, someone gets the Nobel Prize. But do we remember all of them? Of course not. Feynman embraced his weirdness, his quirks. He embraced having a sense of humor. He embraced loving pranks or exploring the world, being in nature, coming to Brazil, becoming a professional bongo player, partaking in carnaval, becoming an artist, publishing articles on Mayan hieroglyphics that had nothing to do with, with physics or anything that he was known for. He liked poetry. He used to scour used bookstores to look for new pieces of information to solve his own problems. So you can see how he applied this curiosity to everything in his life. That's what made him unique. That's what made him a polymath. That's what made him the legend that he is. He's not just known for being a physicist. He's known for being the weirdest physicist. Also was researching for this episode. That's what made him my favorite scientists of all time, at least for now. If you guys know some guy that's weirder or some girl, why not? That's weirder than him, please tell me because I'd love to know. I love these stories of people that are known for something, but actually they do a lot more than most people don't know about. So Rick's philosophy in life is that nobody ever figures out what life is all about. And it doesn't matter. You should explore the world. Nearly Everything is really interesting if you go into it deeply enough. Richard Feynman. So you should think in your own life, what are the things that you find interesting that most people overlook, that they don't see the point? Go all in on them. and Don't suck the joy out of them. Go all in with that childlike curiosity and passion. Like Feynman said, Study hard what interests you the most in the most undisciplined, irreverent, and original manner possible. So basically, be a kid. Embrace your inner kid. Embrace your inner passion, your inner joy, and go find things that you're really curious, that intrigue you, that are magnetic towards you. And by doing this, you'll start embracing what makes you uniquely you. You don't need to conform to the norm and become just another little fish in the sea, another NPC. You can become you. There's only one of you. And by embracing you, by embracing your quirks, the things that make you different from the rest, that's how you can become unforgettable. Because no one will remember the things that you did, that everyone did. They will remember the weirdness. Embrace your weird. If you want to become a classic, you need to do like Feynman. He never forgot about what made him unique, his hobbies, his quirks, and his originality didn't detract from his professional life. No, not at all. The man got a Nobel Prize. His originality just made him a more interesting figure, a more legendary person that we still talk about today, almost 40 years since his passing. And by doing this, by embracing what makes you memorable, what makes you impactful, can become a classic in your own right. In a teaser, next week, we'll talk about the Lindy effect and why classics never die, the secret behind why there are books that people read, even millennia after they were written, like the Bible, the Quran, the Odyssey, the Iliad, and many others. And now I want to challenge you. After you stop listening to this, you start leaning into what makes you unique, what makes you you. What's that one question that you're burning to answer? That one quirk that's hidden, but now you realize that can be your superpower, your edge. Start 
thinking and acting towards that. So apply the fundamental technique to your problem, share your experiences with our community because we love to help each other. And today was a hell of a ride. We learned about the Feynman technique that if you can't explain something to a five-year-old, it means you understand it well enough. So go ahead, teach a kid, teach your pet, teach your teddy bear, but just try to break things down in the most simple way possible because that's the way that you'll actually learn and understand things. Then we talked about Feynman's 12 problem framework, how keeping a list of questions or problems that intrigue you. And every time you discover something new, you revisit that list. And by doing this, you'll start noticing patterns, start getting, reaching conclusions that no one else ever could. And you'll be amazed by the connections and people will start saying you're very creative, but that's dirty little secret. Then finally, embrace your weird. The man was a Nobel Prize winner. He worked in the Manhattan Project. He was an accomplished teacher. He was loved by his students. He was a professional bongo player. He was an accomplished artist. The man could do it all. And so can you. Of course, not all, all, anything, everything. But the things you really like, the things you really enjoy, you can. And that doesn't detract from your professional life. It only adds, it only makes you quirky, it only makes you interesting. That's what will interest other people, not the things you do that everyone else does, not watching all the influencers that everyone watches or watching the reality TV show that everyone watches on Netflix. No, that's NPC stuff. If you're here, you're not NPC. And if you're NPC, we're gonna convert you. That's our gospel, converting NPCs. So go ahead, go be weird, go be wonderful. Just be you. Next week, we'll talk about how being you and embracing your quirkiness can help you become a timeless classic. And if this message struck a chord, if you like this, if you're feeling inspired, don't keep it to yourself, man. Show this to your friends. Show this to your girlfriend or boyfriend or your mom or your cat even or five-year-old little Timmy that you're trying to teach stuff about, show them this, hit the share button like the rock star that you are deep inside, I know you are, and let's bring more dreamers onto the rock and roll to success. Thank you, and as always, go, go, go.